Good afternoon. I'm Chris Edmondson. I'm the Director of Educational Technology for Clovis Unified School District. Joining me today is Sherry Johnston, who is the Coordinator of Educational Technology. And together we are going to show you a number of different tools that are out there for teachers to use with their students to enhance learning um, in different environments and for different um, topics. The first one that I'm gonna to show today is something called Note. And this actually is a product that can be used by uh, you in college or in high school. And it can also be used with, as a teacher. What it does is it basically takes your notes that you have uploaded to Google Docs and it can turn them into a quiz or a flashcard that you can use to practice with. It's available on the Apple, uh, Android, and also available on the computer. I have a small little video to show you kind of what Note looks like. You know, I'm absolutely amazed what artificial intelligence can do. There's a variety of tools out there. Uh, Note is one of the coolest tools that I've seen recently where it takes your notes and then automatically generates a quiz so that you can review your notes. It's a great tool to help our students with studying. Uh, so where is it available? What's well, available right here <clears throat> as a web version, iOS, and also Android app. So here's how it works. You go ahead and you, uh, sign up for an account. Uh, when you sign up for that account, what you can do is you can tie your existing Google account. So if you're a G Suite user, you can import any notes that you might have created and say Google Docs and put it into your um, note account. All right, so here's how it works. So right here I have my notes on the side, okay? And then uh, right here, if I wanna create a brand new note, I can click here. And as you can see, I have all sorts of different options. Um, I can put in, you know, primary colors are, and then I have bullets. So I have all sorts of different formatting options right there. And then I can save my notes uh, right up here, okay? If you wanna import uh, a note, you can click this and it'll ac need to access your Google account. Uh, and then you can import things from Google Drive. If you need to delete a note, it can go right here. And then uh, you can share, now this link right here doesn't necessarily share to your note, uh, so to speak. Um, I'll show you what happens. So uh, this actually will take you, I'll go to an incognito window. It'll just take you to the note website. So um, so anyways, I have right here, I have some different ideas on um, my notes. So I have historical figures. This was a sample. I can click on quiz and it's going to show me right up here. I have uh, questions and I already took some some um, sample questions earlier. What I like is that you can develop a multiple choice or even a fill in the blank uh, type of answer from your notes. Uh, so this right here is, you know, an answer uh, that I'm going to choose and it says it's incorrect. That would be Abraham Lincoln. So I love how it keeps track of all of this uh, stuff in order to, uh, you know, make sure that it's, uh, you know, students are going through and getting things correct. It tracks your progress. I also like right up here where it asks if it's a good question or a bad question. That helps it generate more effective questions for students to study. So Note, a really neat app um, that you can use. It's web-based. It's also iOS and Android-based. You should probably check it out. Really a big game changer, especially if you're a secondary teacher uh, and you teach a core area where there's a lot of assessments and a lot of quizzes. You know, I'm absolutely amazed. So that is Note. Um, again, it's a great tool for students and also for teachers to set up really quick quizzes. Uh, you can take notes that were taken in class or given out in class, upload them into Google, and then uh, make your own little quiz or flashcards from that information. Great little tool.
another another tool that I want to show you is something called eGlass, and it's really a tool that is being used, especially in the environment that we are in now, where we're doing a lot of distance learning. It's uh, really a nice tool to, to help educate students. Meet eGlass, an illuminated glass writing board with a built-in camera. eGlass allows educators to write on the board while simultaneously maintaining eye contact with their students. It's like the students are right behind the glass. The built-in camera captures the whole writing surface and the user's face and automatically flips the image for the audience to see it correctly. Don't worry, you don't have to write backwards. The built-in specialized lighting amplifies your pen's ink, creating an eye-catching glow, and the adjustable instructor lights provide the perfect amount of light for your face. eGlass can be used with dark or light backgrounds and connects to your computer with a single USB cable. The included software has great features like lesson recording, image insertion, and Zoom is built right in so you can schedule, start, and conduct Zoom meetings right from the software. eGlass comes in two sizes, 35 and 50 inches, with the 50 inch being perfect for in-class and hybrid teaching models as well. eGlass isn't just a new way to write on the board, it's a better way. It engages students and gets them excited about learning, even from home. With eGlass, learning has no distance. Now I'm going to turn it over to Sherry and she's going to talk to you a little bit about Adobe Spark. Sherry? Good morning. Thanks for having us today. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about today is Adobe Spark. This is your one-stop shop for pretty much anything that has to do with image creation, website building for students, especially if you're doing something that is portfolio related, creating fun videos. Um, it's just an amazing tool. Um, if you are a Clovis Unified student, you can sign into Adobe Spark um, and get all their bells and whistles. Uh, you just have to make sure you sign in with your Microsoft account, which would be your first name, last name, 001, 002, at my.cusd.com, and choose that you are using your district or school account. Um, so once you pop into Spark, you can see that you are offered lots of different templates to start you off, from everything from uh, an image for an Instagram post to a video. Uh, once you choose your template, then you can go ahead and start adding your own content. And we've had teachers use this just across the board. Video creation, they have kids making memes. They um, are doing different slideshows, which the slideshow is also rendered as a video. We have kids building out web pages uh, for portfolios. These, this can be connected to your Google account, so you can import images and things from your Google account. Um, it's just a phenomenal tool. My suggestion is you pop in there as soon as you can and poke around in there and try some of their templates and start creating. You'll be amazed. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about, every teacher needs some tools for classroom management and it's hard to find a one-stop shop um, when it comes to timers and uh, noise monitors. Um, dice, when you're doing math problems and you want to roll dice for probability and statistics or you know, for addition problems and things like that, um, Classroom Screen is just an amazing tool. So once you open up Classroom Screen, you have lots of different options. You can change the background. There is a random name selector here, so you can type in your students' names and then pick like a student name picker. Uh, you can, this is where you can roll the different dice. Um, if you want to monitor sound in your students uh, in the classroom, you can turn on the sound monitor and it will show you kind of how noisy your classroom is. If it gets too noisy, it gives you a re, um, like a red bar and you can make it um, sound an alarm to let the students know they're getting too noisy. If you are using this as um, 
your background for virtual teaching, distance learning, that kind of thing, um, you can go ahead and you can add different media options on this page so students can see. You can use your classroom screen tools and teach from the same um, portal, basically. You can also, um, if you want students to go to a certain uh, website, you can pop a QR code up there and they can scan it with their phone or click the link at the top. Or, I mean, sorry, sorry, follow the link at the top. If you want to write or do some drawings, you can pop open a little whiteboard in here. It gives you all the different writing options. You can just go ahead and type plain text if you like. If you're telling students what the working environment is supposed to be in your classroom, you have some options here from being silent to working in a small group. If you are starting and stopping different um, activities, this lets the students know you know, are we starting? Are we stopping? Are we getting ready? Some teachers use this in their classroom for classroom management purposes. You have timers, you have stopwatches in here, you have the clock, you have calendars and things like that. So basically it's all your tools in one place. So classroom screen is used widely across many districts. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Chris. Thanks, Sherry. One of the things that has happened with uh, distance learning is there's a, a lot of um, studies out there that we're not connecting um, like we used to. Um, and there's difference, you know, when you're at home and, and all you see is, um, you know, your screen instead of seeing each other, um, it can be a problem. And so, the next couple of tools that I'm going to show you are um, kind of some simulation software. The first one is called Verbella, and Verbella allows you to basically create its uh, your own world. Um, there used to be a product called Second Life out there, um, and basically what it this does is it kind of is similar to that, uh, but it's made for meetings and for uh, classroom environments. And what happens is, is you become an avatar and you can walk around this world and you can talk to people and, and you know, it doesn't replace the one-on-one the -on -one interaction, but it's a lot better than just sitting there and listening to Zoom, kind of like what we're doing now. Um, so this is called Verbella and I'll just show you a quick video about it. Welcome to Verbella, where remote feels more together than ever. Verbella builds immersive virtual worlds, engineered for your exact needs, with support for thousands of people. Create your own office culture, dive into new ideas in classrooms, and throw one-of-a-kind virtual events and trade shows. Founded by organizational psychologists to redefine the future of work and education, Verbella gives you a virtual campus to create the deeply social and collaborative place people are missing. Our customers have the flexibility to operate entirely remotely. They save money on real estate and travel, hire the best talent, and keep people happy and secure. The new normal, the next normal, just normal, whatever you call it, a digitally transformed world of working, learning, and meeting is here. And it's powered by Verbella. Ready to get started? Book a tour on verbella.com today. So that's Verbella. And um, I had the pleasure of um, actually using Verbella and actually attending a um, spotlight on CART where they were doing game design. And they basically had a classroom set up where you could go around and you could talk to uh, students virtually about how they design their game and you could actually play their game on the computers that were in the class as part of this environment. And it just, it was a, it was a cool, cool little thing to do. And, and it's just a little bit different than just sitting through a Zoom and, and hearing people talk to you all day.
The next thing I want to talk about is something called Oculus. And Oculus just came out with a second version. This is an actual Oculus Go, which is the first version. And basically, it's for virtual reality. And um, we're seeing more and more uh, uses of virtual reality in the classrooms. Um, again, this is the Oculus Go. We also, in our district, we also have um, ones from Lenovo that um, work with um, different websites uh, to, to view things in three different uh, dimensions. And so um, just showing you a little bit about what the Oculus Go, what's really nice about this is they've come way down in price. If you attended Clovis North, we actually have an environment um, that is using what are called Oculus Rifts. And those have to be plugged into a very high powered machine and they cost thousands of dollars. And we have an environment in Mrs. Allen's class over at Clovis North. But now this is all self-contained in one thing and you don't have to be connected to a computer anymore. And the cost of these are only $299. So they've come way down in price and the quality is actually um, is very, very good. Let me just show you a video on using different tools in, um, in the Oculus. This is one uh, that I like. Number one, Titans of Space Plus. There are quite a few space-based experiences I'm going to mention today, but one of the best and most educational is Titans of Space Plus. In this experience, you head out on a guided tour of our solar system with your friendly and knowledgeable tour guide. There's actually two hours of content that can be learned as you stop at each of the planets, the major moons, dwarf planets, and even zoom farther into the universe to take a look at huge stars. This experience makes you really feel the vast scale of the universe, and it presents learning in a fun, but very educational way. This is one of the best educational apps on the Quest Tour, so I definitely recommend it. Titans of Space Plus is $9.99. Number two, Apollo 11 is nine. Okay, and another great one that I, I like um, is especially now with um, the International Space Center Station being in the news so much, um, you can actually take a virtual tour and act like you are in the um, International Space Center. So here it is about history and space travel. Apollo 11 is $9.99. Number five, Mission ISS. The next experience is one of the most amazing free experiences on the quest, and that is Mission ISS. In Mission ISS, you get to visit the International Space Station, float around in zero gravity, go out into space on a spacewalk, and even help perform certain tasks on the ISS. This experience is as close to being up in space as you can get in VR, and it's a great educational tool to show how those on the ISS live and go about their daily lives. The only thing to keep in mind with this experience is that due to the zero gravity nature of the game, it can cause some motion sickness in some people. So just keep that in mind. But for free, Mission ISS is just stellar. Number six. What's great about that, like he said, is it's free. And uh, we've done that with uh, students and it's a really amazing um, what they can go and take a look at. The other thing we've done with students is we've taken elementary students to uh, Santa's workshop during during Christmas time and, um, you know, let them look around um, the North Pole and, and interact with the reindeer and things like that. So VR is a is come a long way. And I think it's another tool that's going to be expanding and being used in education uh, quite a lot in the future. Thanks, Chris. All right, so back to a little bit of classroom management. Um, I know many teachers, you're always having to randomly select names, whether students have won a prize or you're choosing them to answer the next question. One of the fun sites we love to use is Wheel of Names. It just has tons of, op tons of options in here um, as far as the look, the feel, you can go dark mode, full screen. You type in your students' names over here on a list, you can sort them in different ways. You can, al you can also add images to the wheel. Um, you can also come in here and customize your wheel of names by the sound that plays at the end after you spin, what's happening during the spin. 
um, how many things you can show on the wheel, how long do you want it to spin, if you allow duplicates, so if people put in more than one ticket or something like that and you're typing out one, one chance per ticket, it can spin fast, it can spin slow, but once you spin it, this is what the experience is like. So at this point, I have the option to remove that student's name and to spin again. If I sign in with my Google account, I can save my different lists. So if you're a teacher that teaches multiple periods, you don't want to keep typing students' names over and over and over. You can type a one list per period, add new students as necessary, take out students who maybe have transferred out, keep saving those lists, and they would be right, available right here for you underneath um, your, your created list. Another way just to stay organized as a teacher, or in, honestly, as a student, um, is OneNote Notebook. Um, this is free, and you can download it across pretty much any platform. Uh, I have seen many students with iPads, with Apple Pencils, taking notes in their OneNote, and then it basically allows that note to be accessible from your laptop, from your phone, um, and from the iPad where you took the notes. It can also take that handwriting and turn it into actual typed out notes and things like that. What you can do in OneNote is almost limitless. It is just truly amazing. It's basically you keep binders. So you can have one binder per subject. As a student, there is an option in here too where you can record lectures. As you take notes, it tags where you took that note with a timestamp, once the lecture is complete, you can go back and click on that timestamp and listen to the portion of the lecture that corresponded to that note. You will find no better storage solution for notes and important information than OneNote. So Microsoft has really come a long way. Um, most schools uh, use Google as their platform, but more and more are, are seeing the benefit of some of the tools that Microsoft has. In Clovis Unified, we've actually given students a Google account and also a Microsoft account so that teachers can choose which one they wanna use and what they feel is best for um, their class. Another Microsoft uh, tool that is out there is, and some people are very familiar with PowerPoint, but they've actually um, announced a new tool in PowerPoint called PowerPoint Live. And basically what this does is it allows you as a teacher to present your PowerPoint, but you can give a URL or a QR code to the students and they can actually watch your deck and actually make comments about your your presentation while it is live. It's called PowerPoint Live and I have a short little video to show you about it. Giving presentations is crucial for educators, businesses, everyone. It can be one of the most important things you do. So you need all the help you can get. Live presentations in PowerPoint lets you engage with your audience better than ever before. When you start presenting, a QR code or URL lets the audience connect. This unlocks new features where they can follow along with the deck, navigate on their own, get back to the current slide quickly, and enable real-time captions or subtitles in their preferred language. Anyone in the crowd can review or follow along with what you're saying, aunque no hables el lenguaje. As you're presenting, you can see how many people have joined the live presentation. The audience can provide live reactions, which shows you how your presentation is being perceived, letting you adjust on the fly. After you finish presenting, the audience is prompted to provide their feedback on how you did, so you can focus on areas to improve. These features will help make your presentations more engaging and create a closer connection between you and your audience, giving you confidence to present better than you ever have before. Engage with your audience using live presentations in PowerPoint. 
And that's available in uh, Microsoft Office 365, which again, as a, if you're a Clovis Unified student, or actually if you're a student at, um, at in, in college, you all have um, Office 365 accounts. A lot of times um, people ask me, you know, I'm, I'm going to graduate here soon and I, I want to get a job in education. What are some things that I can do to better prepare myself so that I'm more attractive to get hired um, when I go through the, the hiring process? And I'm going to show you a couple of big ones, in my opinion, that if it's on your resume, I think um, it will separate you uh, from... The, the pack a little bit. The first one is um, you can actually become Google certified, Google educator certified. There's actually level one and then there's level two certification. And it does cost, but the level one certification only costs $10 to take the test. And level two um, actually costs $25. But uh, basically it shows that you are proficient with the with um, the tools that Google has, like Google Classroom, like Google Drive, Google Draw, uh, Google Forms, there are a number of to great tools that are out there by Google that can be used in the classroom. And this right here is one way um, to go about getting certified. It takes a three-hour test. Um, you can see it costs ten dollars. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put the, the link in the, um, in the document that we're going to share with you uh, later on. But basically, it'll actually take you through um, how to prepare for the test. What do you need to know? Uh, things like that. Great tool to get uh, to put on your resume to say that you are Google Educated Certified. The other certification that I also recommend is uh, Microsoft. As I said before, Microsoft has really gotten into this year and last year uh, more of the education space. And they also have a cert certification program, uh, I'm sorry, certification program. And it's called Microsoft Innovative, Innovative Edu Educator, excuse me, um, or MIE. And this is also basically the same type of, of training and certification that you would get from the Google Educator. Um, it allows you to subscribe into their educational platform where they have blogs and a number of different resources um, that, you can, that you can use. And by the way, this is free. It does not cost to get certified in this. So this is another one that I, that I highly recommend uh, getting before you try to go out and get a job. I'm gonna turn it now back over to Sherry. In the classroom, you may not have a big bank of computers for all your students to use, but that's okay. Um, you can use something called Plickers, and Plickers is a very unique teaching solution, I guess you could say. Um, it's free. You can upgrade to Pro for some extra bells and whistles, but you can create quizzes. And instead of students having to have a device to respond, they use cards that look like this. Let me see if you can see this um, right here. And you can see there's an A, a B, a C, and then down here is a D. And how they hold the card is how they vote. So whatever letter is at the top, you have a, your, comp um, your computer or your phone, you can take it and you can scan across the room, the students holding these up. And depending on how the card is held up, it scans the response in A, B, C, or D. So this is what, the way the cards look. And this is how a teacher scans the classroom. Sorry, let me move my tools out of the way here so I can play this. So this is how the teacher scans. If you look at her phone, you might be able to see how it starts to pick up the responses from the students. So you see the students holding up their cards 
whatever's on the top, that's the letter that is being chosen. And you can see on her device, she automatically gets the scores of how her students have responded for each question. So that's what makes it pretty slick. It's immediate feedback to the teacher. You can on the fly adjust your teaching if necessary. And I'll show you what it looks like on the back end to get your, um, your analytics from that quiz. So I'm here, let's see, the test class. There's my library. So this is the one we gave actually last year. And here, here's the report. So after I scanned the two questions, this is how it ended up being scanned. So each card has a specific number on it and you can actually assign numbers to students. So instead of it being student 14, it would have actually have a student's name here. And it shows you how they answered each question. And then the percentages too. So it's just immediate feedback to a teacher, low tech, and low cost. Uh, another really great um, program we use, especially with primary learners, is Write Reader. Um, it's free, uh, you know, limited. If you pay um, the little extra, you get lots of bells and whistles and unlimited books on your bookshelf and things like that. Um, it's just great. It's a great way for students to write for each other, write, writing for that authentic audience. Then you have a digital library. The students can pop in there. Um, there's also a read aloud portion in here. So after the students write their books and you go through and correct it. So it has a place for students to type and then a place for a teacher to type. Students can then go in and read their own stories. So they're creating their own read alouds for their friends. It is just super motivating, right, to write a book, publish a book, and, and be the voice of that book, especially um, in a classroom where, you know, they're, they're always excited to see what everybody else is doing, and they can write about lots of different experiences and things. So Write Reader is really pretty amazing. They've actually come out with, um, with it on iPads and on mobile devices, but this is just a quick video of how it works. Um, it's just a quick one-minute video. Um, I started like 14 minutes in, so I'm mean, 14 seconds in. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this for you so you can see how easy it is for especially those young writers to use. Then we'll add a title. From there, we'll add the author's name. Next, we'll add an image from our image bank. And save it. After that, we can add more pages here. This time, Let's use an image from our safe search engine. This section is for the student writing. And this is the adult writing section. You can keep adding pages or find your book on the bookshelf and continue editing at home. Go on, give it a try. I have to say, you as a teacher and a student, you should give it a try too. Um, especially if you have younger brothers and sisters, you might wanna have them write some books. You know, it's just an exciting thing to do. Then you can share them with other people in your family. So, all right, Chris, back to you. I love when uh, students actually produce something that can be viewed by others. Um, they take ownership and um, I think it's a really useful um, tool for teachers to use to get kids excited about what they're learning and they can show what they're learning. So another thing that they can use uh, to develop um, real things is uh, 3D printing. And 3D printing in the past year or so has really exp exploded in um, education. There are a number of different uh, 3D printing tools that have come out. And what's great about this is they've come way down in price. You can get a 3D printer now um, for elementary per uh, schools for under $1,000. 
And so this one right here is called MakerBot. And you can see, you know, it's, it's relatively small, so it can, it can be in a classroom. And um, we're gonna show you something that was, was printed out on a MakerBot. So you can see with 3D printing, it, it basically takes filament and it kind of builds layer upon layer. And what's really nice about this is, is that kids can actually either use templates that are already designed for them to print things out, or they can actually create their own. So it, it takes them a step further, it gets them into engineering and, and things like that and, and develop how things would actually look. So as you can see, this is going layer by layer by layer. It does take a while for it to print out. Um, but what's nice is, you know, it's actually a physical thing that they can see that it's actually being printed out. So you can see it here at the end, it's Yoda and it's done by different layers that they did. One of our schools actually um, used the 3D printer to help a dog uh, that had a, a broken leg. And they actually, um, the kids brainstormed and actually came up with a, a, a flexible cast for the dog that they were able to put on the dog's leg to support it as, um, as it was walking. And so kids are actually seeing some real life applications of what they've learned and, um, in class and they, they developed the entire project themselves. And it, it, was, uh, it was kind of a cool thing. Another thing that students are able to um, do, and this is actually relatively new, is there's been an explosion of people doing podcasts. And so in secondary level, we've actually had some students actually create their own podcast. And this is a, this is a product called Anchor that is um, actually owned by Spotify. But it, what's really nice is it's uh, free to use and basically you can sign up and you can create your own podcast and then it gets published out to different um, services that people can go and subscribe to your podcast and um, you know you can become semi-famous in the podcasting world. So those are the couple of tools that I wanted to show you about products that can be developed and then shared out uh, from students. There are lots of different activities that you would love to do with your students. Well, let's do them by saving paper. <laughs> so if you go to flippity.net, there are tons of activities in here that you would normally spend time at the copy machine making copies, crossword puzzles, word scrambles, word searches, spelling practice, just there are so many things in here and they keep adding more and more. Um, what's amazing about this too is that it's all done basically with Google Sheets. Um, you put in the information, you publish it to the web, then it pulls that into these activities. Each activity is great because it gives you instructions on exactly what to do. It gives you a template that you need to follow. And you can also poke in here and see a little demo of what that is. So we have flashcards here. Here's another random name picker. Here's a randomizer. If you're doing the random, remember it's like make a story and you get a random subject, a random place, you know, a random weather, that kind of thing. This randomizer is great. Scavenger hunts, a lot like breakout EDU, if you've ever played a game like that. You can also easily make a like Jeopardy style game for your class. Um, drag and drop, matching. You'd be amazed. As a brand new teacher, this is one of those sites I would check out and just have on hand um, and ready to go. Here's a new one. It's actually the Flippity board game. We've played it. It is super fun. It's a great way to review so, um, before tests and things like that. You know, what's more fun than to play a game to review? So um, like I said, take time, poke around in here. It's amazing. Another site I want to show you real quick is called Edpuzzle. Um, in this distance learning environment, your teacher may have given you a video that they've put into Edpuzzle. 
uh, where they've added questions along the way, it kind of keeps you engaged. You're watching, you know, it's going to be paused. You're going to be asked about the information um, you've just watched. It allows the student, once they've watched it the first time, to go back and repeat it before answering the question. It's almost like self-checking your understanding as you go. We have put together a ton of different technology trainings for CUSD teachers. We've housed them all in one location and Chris has added this link to the Google document we'll be sharing with you. We've actually opened them up to everyone. So you can pop in here under the technology tab and take a quick look at all the ones that we've talked about. Um, it, gives, it just gives you a really good idea of what our teachers have available to them. Um, and it's great if you can go into a, an interview talking about some of the technology that administrators know that their teachers are using. So take advantage of this um, great learning resource. Hour of Code is something that many teachers do every year to introduce their students to computer science. So we have hour of code activities. These are short. Um, you can do them in one setting within one hour activities. But code.org, who um, puts on hour of code, also has their own curriculum. So if you're a K-6 teacher um, and you want to bring computer science to your students, they have the fundamentals from K to 5. We do a CS Discoveries um, curriculum that goes six to 10. Um, at sixth graders, I'd probably use more of the fifth grade curriculum with them, maybe get them into CS Discoveries, but this is definitely more of a seven, eight, nine curriculum. And then we do CS Principles, which some of our schools actually offer AP courses in the CS Principles. Um, it's just amazing, you know, giving students the, ba the basics in computer science can really take them far. As a teacher and a parent, um, you might want to definitely acquaint yourself with Common Sense Media. Um, this really gives lots of really awesome reviews on books, um, ed tech applications and things like that. You can browse by you know, different media type. You can also come in and you can also browse by um, ages of students to get recommendations. Uh, um, anything from books to different apps the students can use. Um, if you pop in here and you start to come in here and search, let's look at different apps. Once I click there, then I can go ahead, I can start to filter by age and type. So let's say I have my, my little niece is eight years old. So I want to look for things that are specific to eight year olds. What's going to do is it's going to give me lots of different results. So these are apps that my, my eight year old niece could use and it gives you stars and you can click deeper to see not only what common sense has given it but you can come in here and also see different comments that people have left you know what do parents need to know about it what do parents say and also they give kids a voice too what are kids saying about it okay so that's common sense media definitely become acquainted with this when I was a teacher in the classroom I would always have parents coming and asking me, what do you think about this book? What do you think about this app? And you know, I haven't read every book and I haven't experienced every app. So it's definitely a great resource to have in your back pocket. Okay, I'm gonna pass it back to Chris. Okay, a couple more things that we're gonna show you as we wrap things up here. The first of which is, you know, I'm gonna date myself a little bit. Um, I was a laptop teacher in Clovis Unified in starting in 1996, as before most of you were born. Um, so, you know, back in the day, people were like, well, I, I, don't, I don't like technology. I can't use technology. I don't know how to use technology. And I think what has happened is there's been a growth of acceptance of using technology in the classroom. And then there was really a huge push with COVID and having to go to distance learning where there wasn't a choice anymore. You had to use technology in the classroom to, to educate your students. I don't think we're ever going to go back to, oh, I don't like technology and I can't use it in the classroom. And I think it's only going to expand. 
Now, one of the things that we have seen a lot of with expanding is the use of computers in the classroom. And the beauty of, of um, some of the tools that have come out recently are the cost has come way down. It used to cost $1,200, $1,000 per computer for, for Clovis Unified to purchase that to put in the classroom. Or we had a laptop program where parents were purchasing $1,000 machines. Actually, in 1996, the cost was $2,500 for a computer. And it didn't do nearly what your phone can do. Um, so just a little story on that. But you know, this is a Chromebook that um, you know has really helped uh, facilitate um, technology in education because the cost of this, the cost on a Chromebook is around $200, $300. And so it, it allows school districts to buy three compared to what they were when they were only buying one. So it's really fueled the expansion of technology in the classroom. Another thing that we have done in our district to help with facilitating um, curriculum in the classroom is we use a product called Clever. And what Clever is, is a one-stop portal for our students to go to, um, so that they don't have to remember every single password of every single tool that is used in their uh, curriculum or in the classroom. So if you take a look, this is our portal. We have district links and we have links for Google. We have links for Office 365. But if you scroll down here, we actually have, you know, a number of different links for textbooks. Some of the classrooms, they can get their textbooks online here. So they don't have to carry around that, you know, five, 10 pound weight in their backpack. Um, we have a number of some other tools like Seesaw, Turnitin. Um, there's a number of different tools. Some of the ones that we showed you are also on here. Brain Pop is very popular. Uh, Pear Deck, Near, Nearpod, uh, Code.org. That was something that Sherry shared with you. Um, so we have a number of different tools that are available for teachers and students to use in our district. So. As a district, we've chosen to use a product called Clever. Uh, there are other districts that are using other tools like this, but what I did, or what we did was we tried to set it up for being a one-stop shop so that teachers and students could only have to go to one place to find all the resources that they were, that they need. Speaking of that, uh, we're running out of time, so we never get to all of the things that we wanna show you uh, in this class or in this presentation. So what we've done is we've put together a, a document that has a number of different links of some of the things that we have shown you, but also some of the things that we didn't have a chance to show you, like Padlet. Padlet is a really cool uh, tool to use in the classroom. Talked a little bit about virtual reality and storytelling sites, and then some other ed tech resources um, that are available, some websites to check out. I really like this free tech for teachers um, because it's an actual website by a teacher, uh, lives up in Maine, and he basically uh, publishes one or two times a day about different tools that he is using in the classroom and how he's used it in the classroom. Really a nice product out there. Um, I also, we put also uh, information about professional development. One of the things that's coming up is we do a tech boot camp um, every year that uh, we let subs, if you're on our sub list, uh, attend. Um, there's also an organization in our valley called Central Valley Q, which is computing, computer using educators. Um, and they actually have a conference also, hasn't been announced and it probably will be virtual this year, um, but I put their website on there. Then they also have the national um, conference for Q, which is virtual and um, it's normally in Palm Springs, but you can see it does cost, but it's, it's definitely worth seeing what teachers are doing with, with um, computers and other technologies in the classroom. And then there's an organization called ISTE, 
which uh, actually has come out with standards for students and teachers and administrators um, to kind of better use edu uh, technology in education. They have a, a national conference. It's, it is usually all over the place. Um, this year it was supposed to be in San Antonio, Texas, but unfortunately with COVID it is going vir virtual. Uh, it does cost, it's $145, but it's also, it's probably the biggest um, ed tech conference there is uh, in the nation. There's usually about 25,000 people that attend that. Um, also, Q is having free memberships. So if you're interested, I'm going to put the link on there so that you can, um, you can sign up for a free membership, get some benefits of some resources and, and some discounts uh, if you actually go to uh, q.org and sign up for a free membership. So I think that's all I have to share. Um, Sherry, do you have anything else that you want to share? No, no. I think we've probably overloaded their brains. <laughs> but please take some time and um, maybe over the summer, um, poke around in some of these apps and things that we've shared with you and get yourself acquainted with them. Um, share them with others. Enjoy. Yeah, we appreciate your time. And, and uh, next year, uh, hopefully we'll be back in face to face with you uh, for this presentation. But we hope that you got some uh, good information out of this uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Sherry. Um, our email is just our first name and last name, followed by at cusd.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Bye.